Hey, what's going on everybody? This is Brian at Legacy Escape Box, and today we're gonna to be talking about three ways that you can use language translations in an escape room. I'm gonna break this up into easy, medium, and difficult. You might wanna use an easy, medium, or difficult whenever you're setting up an escape room, depending on your audience. We're gonna use these really cool dictionaries that I've found. English is my first language, but this is actually German-based. So you'll see German to Italian, German to French, German to Spanish, and German to English. So this is a really cool way to do translation so that it's not super easy. Instead of translating simply from German to English or Spanish to English or Italian to English and so on, you have to translate through a different language back into English. So in this case, if I give some Italian words, for example, I would have to translate it to German and then German back into English because there's not an Italian to English. Adding on an extra layer to any escape room puzzle makes that puzzle a little more interesting. Let's go ahead and jump on in. Okay, an easy way to use language translations in an escape room is simply a direct translation. In this first easy puzzle, what you'll do is give the participants these clues. Now these could be in a box. You could lead up to finding these somewhere in a box. You wanna make sure that participants know that these flags would open this lock. What I've done here is create these flags have an Italian flag and a French flag, and on the back of each one, I have numbers. So that way they know these are an Italian language and these are a French language. If people are having trouble finding uh, what language or what flag this is, then you can also put an atlas in the room, which will help people know that this certain flag goes to this certain country, hence that certain language. Okay, this first puzzle is simple. We have an Italian flag, and a French flag, so that lets us know that we'll be using the Italian dictionary and the French dictionary. So when I flip it over, I have these Italian words that translate into six and eight. When I translate these French words, these simply translate into eight and seven. So when I punch those into my lock, I get six, eight, eight, seven. The great thing about these is that you translate the language uh, from Italian into German, and then German into English. Uh, English is my first language, and so this just adds an extra layer into your translations. Instead of going straight from Italian to English, you have to go Italian, German, and then German to English. Same thing for French. All right, so the next way we can use language translations in an escape room is to add an extra layer to the puzzle. So instead of doing a direct translation, which was easy mode, we can take it up just one notch. Okay, this medium puzzle is a little more complex. We have the words Jello, Additionaire, and Azul. This is Italian, French, and Spanish. So what we would do is look up the Italian word Jello. Once we pull it up in our Italian to German dictionary, we can see Jello is Gelp in German. So then we take that extra step. We come to our German to English dictionary we look up the word gelp and we know it means yellow. So we do this for each word. We have yellow. We would look up in the French dictionary, dictionnaire, and then azul. The good news is, is if you have someone who already knows these languages, that's okay. You're just one step ahead of the game. But the cool thing is, is if people don't speak these extra languages, then that's okay too, because then you would go ahead and do the translations. That's blau, and blau would translate into blue. So then we come back, we have yellow plus blue. We know the answer is green. So green could be the answer via another code. We could type in green and open the box, open the lock, or we could do something else. For example, we could, you guessed it, use a transparency. So here I have a color wheel and we can put a transparency over the top and give additional information uh, that points to the answer in green. We can even add another layer to the puzzle if we wanted to, and I'll show you what I mean here. Okay, so if I were gonna go ahead and color around this color wheel, just trace it, I'm gonna do that really quickly. And this does not have to be perfect. Now we can write A, B, C, D, E. So we can write a, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J. 
we can do this on a couple of different areas. I'm not gonna put it on yellow or blue. I am gonna put it on green and red so that they know inside to out where these columns are. So I have, using this, I wrote A through J starting inside to outside. I have A through J. This way participants know that A through J starts in the inner ring and moves out. Now I will write numbers on some of these. I'll write it on orange and purple and green. Okay, as an example, you can see how I mix these up. So I typed on orange one through 10 in a row. On green, I mixed up the numbers. Um, and even on purple, I mixed up the numbers. It can be any order I want. What you can do for an extra layer is write letters here. So if I write, for example, letters So now I wrote the letters H, G, C, D. So they know yellow plus blue, the answer would be green. So then green, H, G, C, D. They would then translate that. H is six, G is eight, C is five, and D is two. So that would be the answer to your puzzle. That answer then would open a lock. Okay, the third way we can use language translations in an escape room is a little more complex. So this is our difficult puzzle. Uh, what we'll be doing is using a lot of information together. We'll use information from a journal. We'll have these postcards from different countries that correspond to the journal. We'll have to put these in order using information on the back and from there translate in order to find the answer. So let's jump on into that. Okay, so if we're going to use postcards in a journal, then the first thing we need to do is write our journal. Okay, so we've used our cross pen and written our journal. This cross pen is amazing, by the way. This was a gift from my parents to me, and it is insane. Um, okay, so we're gonna use a combination of postcards and this journal. So you can read it, it says, we'll never forget their journals. They traveled to a lot of places, and we have a set of six different postcards to fit a four digit lock. So here we see in the journal that they're, they've made some trips. Their favorites were France, Germany, Italy, and Spain. So out of our six postcards, we're gonna narrow it down to France, Germany, Italy, and Spain, okay? So we won't be using these other two. Good luck finding a four digit code with six numbers, right? Okay, so the first thing we'll need to do is actually put some information on the back of these postcards. So when doing an escape room puzzle, when you're setting it up, you actually have to work backwards. So I'm gonna put dates on these because in the journal, it says they can't remember the order in which I visited them, these four countries. So for these countries, the order is gonna be the postmark date. So we're gonna add some po postmark dates. This doesn't have to be anything fancy. So typically, we'll put, we'll simply write a month and a day. And then to make it look like a postmark, you can put a circle, you can do a little outline if you want to. I'm gonna write dates on the back of all of the postcards. If you have a fancy tool you wanna to use to make it look more like a postmark, you can do that. I'm just gonna use a pen. I have a couple of other ones not mentioned in the journal, but we're gonna go ahead and put dates on here anyway. Um, that way, if people see the numbers here, they're not going to just simply guess it. They're gonna to have to use the correct ones and put them in order, but only the correct ones.
Okay, so now all of our postcards have dates on them. They only can use, according to the journal, France, Germany, Italy, and Spain. Okay, not gonna use these two. If they use these, they'll get it incorrect. Also, they have to put it in the right order. One other piece of information we have to put on the back of each one is a translation for a number. So let's add that information next. On the back of the French postcard, I'm gonna write the word Hewitt. H-U-I-T, Germany. I'm only gonna write the word Eins. On the Spain postcard, I'm only gonna write the word Quattro. On the Italian postcard, I'm only gonna write the word Nove. On the English postcard, I'm only gonna write the word Seven. And on Croatia, I'm gonna write the word debit. So the way this works, when using France, translate this into the number eight. Germany, translate this into the number one. And they would have to put these in order. France, Germany, Spain, and Italy, not using the other two. Spain, the word quattro, that's gonna translate into four. Rome, Italy, it's gonna translate into nine. Once they use only these postcards and put them in the correct order, May, June, August, October, we have Hewitt is eight. Germany, Eins, that's one. Quattro is Madrid. Quattro is four, Nove is nine. That means, translated, eight, one, four, nine. We put in eight, one, four, nine into our lock. That will open our lock. That is the more complex puzzle. Using the journal and the postcards, having to put them in order, the right ones only, not the incorrect ones, then using a translation, using our dictionary. So that's how you would do it. All right, everyone. So as you can see, there's a lot of different things you can do to use language translations in an escape room. You can keep adding more complexity. You can take complexity away. It's just about adding more branches and features and layers to each puzzle, depending on how complex you want it to be. All right, everyone. Thanks for watching three ways that you can use a language translation in an escape room. I hope this helped and I hope this adds some cool layers to your escape rooms that you're designing for home or school or work. Make sure to hit that subscribe button if you haven't yet. Thanks for watching guys and I will see you next time.